Welcome to the FDOT Automated Quantities Training for MicroStation Select Series 4, Module 6. This video will cover Chapter 7 from the Automated Quantities Training Guide and will discuss the summary of PayAtoms workflow. As we saw at the beginning of the training, the Quantities workflow has two types of sheets that go into the plans. So far, we've discussed the development of the Quantities database and the plan summary of Quantities boxes. Now we need to take a look at how we get the quantities we saved in our database into AshtoWare Project Preconstruction, then how we get a report back from there to complete the plan summary of pay items. In this chapter, we have a lot of bouncing around between various applications and websites, and we run into a lot of new terminology. It's enough to make your head spin if you aren't familiar with all these tools. So I've put together a list of some of the things we'll run across here that might help you as we go through this section. I won't read them word for word, but we'll take a spin through some definitions. AshtoWare Project Preconstruction is used by estimates and construction to track the progress of a project. You'll see a lot of references to transport, and that's because that's the tool that was used for this function in the past, and it's still referred to by that name. WebGate is the website we use to access the AshtoWare tools. It requires a user ID and password. Non-FDOT consultants have to request access from their FDOT project manager. AshtoWare reporting has a lot of different report options. The most important one for our quantities process is the summary of pay items report. Designer Interface is the web application that we use to view and interact with the project information in project preconstruction. Summary of Pay Items is the plan sheet we're required to include on our plans that lists all the pay items and quantities for our project. Quantity Manager, as we've seen, is the GeoPack application that works with DNC Manager and allows us to manage the database of our quantity information. XML is a file type and file extension that is the format we use to store and exchange the data between our CAD applications and the web-based AshtoWare applications. And Quantity Rounder is a tool provided by FDOT that takes our exported quantities and makes sure that all the values are rounded to the correct precision as defined in the basis of estimates. There may be some other new terms throughout this module, but I'll try to explain everything as I go. Since this chapter does a lot of work that requires a user ID and password, we didn't create specific exercises for the users to do. But for demonstration purposes, I'll break the process up into steps and demonstrate how it's done. Step 1. Export Quantity Data from Quantity Manager Here, I'll show you how to export quantity data from Quantity Manager to an XML file. Then we'll review the XML file and see what it looks like. Next, we'll use the Quantity Rounder tool to process the XML file, and then we'll take another look and see what changed. For this step, we'll need to open Quantity Manager. And open our AQT MDB file. Make sure to navigate to the correct Project and Discipline folder, Select the AQT file and click Open. Then click Connect. Let's set our transport groupings to 200. Keep in mind that you can only export one set of groupings at a time, and you'd get an error if you created your XML from all transport groupings. Then we can expand the whole pay item tree. Highlight the root folder, then hit Control A to select all the items in the tree. This process will only export the items in the 200 transport grouping. Now we can go to Project, Export, Export, and let's set up the export dialog. There's a long list of export styles, but the only one used by FDOT in the quantities process is the one at the very bottom. AEC XML 
plus funding. Make sure the checkbox beside Rename Transport Groupings is checked and the box is filled in as Design Estimate with no space. Don't let this confuse you. This won't change the 200 grouping. It only changes the cost type tag in the XML. Since the example in the training guide shows to name the file quantity.xml, that's what we can do here. In your project, you can name it Roadway or 200 or whatever format makes sense. Just be consistent. Just as a quick check, let's click on the Browse button and be sure that the file is directed to the correct discipline folder. It's going to the right place, so I'll just close this out. Now everything is set, we can click Export. Because we're using a training project for our project header here, we get this error message. I know there's missing information, but it won't keep us from the demonstration, so we'll just click OK. The export was completed successfully. Click OK. Close the export dialog. And let's go back to MicroStation. Now we need to take a look at that XML file we just exported. The quickest way to get to our Project Discipline folder is to go to Standard, Explore Current Working Directory. Then we can find our quantity.xml file. Right click and open with Notepad. This XML file looks like a lot of code, but if we scroll down, we can see what looks like individual quantity entries. Here you can see a value rounded to three decimal places. So let's close this file and go back to MicroStation. You can find the Quantity Rounder tool under Actions, Ashtaware, Quantity Rounder. Or, on the Quantities taskbar, there's a Quantity Rounder icon. This opens a very simple tool. Just select Process XML File and navigate to our project. And Discipline folder. And select the Quantity.xml file and click Open. It says file created and that the name was saved with underscore rounded, so we can click OK. And let's look back in our discipline folder. Now we have the quantity underscore rounded dot XML. Let's see what this looks like. Right click and open with notepad. Then we can scroll down and see the same item quantity we looked at before has now been rounded off. Step 2. Import Quantity Data to Designer Interface. Here, we'll open Designer Interface and look at the CAD training project. Then we'll upload two different rounded.xml files. And we'll see what it looks like when an XML has data that's rejected by Designer Interface and when it's accepted and uploaded. Now that we've got our rounded XML, the next thing we need to do is upload it to Designer Interface. You can either go to Actions, Ashtaware, and select WebGate, or you can click on the WebGate icon on the Quantity taskbar. On the web page, select Designer Interface. Then we need to log in to access our project. For this demonstration, we're using the CAD Office Testing Project. You could either click Import from here, or click Update and look at the Project Details page. 
I forgot to mention it in the previous module, but you can export the header from the details page as well. But for now, we want to click on Import. From here, we need to click Select Files and navigate to our project. In the Roadway Discipline folder, notice that I've now got a quantity bad rounded XML. We can use this so you can see what happens when you accidentally export a quantity with Design Estimate instead of the O200 category from DNC Manager to the MDB. Select the quantity bad file and click Open. Then click Upload File. That red bar means something went wrong. If you look under the Info column, you'll see that there's a category, Design Estimate. I actually slipped that in on the three elements of guardrail we had in the previous module. You can see that just one DNC export can cause the whole quantity XML to get rejected. Let's cancel out and go back and try our import again. This time, let's go to Select Files and good, it remembers our folder path. Now we can select Quantity Rounded and click Open. Then click Upload File. Green is good. Since everything in this file matches the last time I tested this project, nothing really changed. But the Project Successfully Loaded message sure looks nice. Step 3. Generate reports from WebGate Reporting. Here, I'll log into the WebGate Reporting web page so we can create a couple of reports. First, we'll look at the Project Edit Report and see if there are any errors on our project. Then we'll generate the Summary of Pay Items Report and save it to our project. OK, in the last step, we uploaded all our roadway quantity items to Designer Interface and now our project is getting prepared to be submitted. All the other disciplines have uploaded their quantities too, and we've used Designer Interface to enter any extra quantities that may not have been included in our database. When we're confident that the database in Project Preconstruction is complete, we can use the WebGate Reporting page to generate our reports. So on the Quantities taskbar, we can click on the WebGate link, but this time, we'll click on the link for WebGate Reporting. Then we'll be taken to the login page. If you don't have a user ID and password, and you need one, you'll need to contact your FDOT project manager to request access. The first thing we're going to do is run the project edit report. This report isn't required to be submitted, but it will show us if there are any errors in the pay items loaded in the project, or if there are any pay items that require extra documentation, like a Technical Special Provision, or TSP. Under Designers, Estimators, and Reviewers, select the Project Edit Report link. You'll need to locate the project number. Luckily, we're using the CAD Training Project, which is right at the top. But for newer projects, you'll have to scroll through quite a lot of project numbers to find the right one. Because we don't need to submit this report, we can just use the HTML option to look at the results on a web page. And right off the bat, we can see that there are pay item errors found here. Of course, this being the training project, it isn't complete, and as we scroll around, we can see that there are categories in the project that have no pay items. Notice, too, that this is page one of four. On a full project, you may have many pages of data to look through to locate any errors. The page navigation is at the top of the screen, and you can browse through the pages as needed to find any problems. At this point, you would need to coordinate to fix any errors, or, if no errors were found, or if the errors you saw in this report wouldn't affect your summary of pay items, you could proceed to the Summary of Pay Items report. For this, we need to look under General Reports. 
At the bottom of this section, you'll see the summary of Pay Items Report. Once again, you'll need to scroll to find your project number from the list. For this, we'll select the training project. We know that we're going to need the report to create our tables in MicroStation, so let's go ahead and select the report type for CAD file. Don't forget to click the Auto Generate Proposal Sections button, and you'll see when the proposal sections were successfully generated. Then click the Submit button under the Report Types. You should see the save bar at the bottom of your screen. Notice that the file name for this XML is the proposal number, not the project number. You want to make sure that there is a proposal number assigned to your project before creating this report for final plans. Be sure to click the down arrow beside Save and select Save As. Verify that it's the correct project and discipline folder. You'll see that there's already a copy of this XML in the dataset. I've included it so that you can practice the next step and go through the steps of creating the summary of pay items. Don't forget to log out of the WebGate reporting page when you're done with this step. Step 4. Create the summary of pay items sheet. Here, we'll use the Create File tool to create the summary of pay items file. Then we'll use the Transport tool to create the summary of pay items sheets. For this step, you can follow along in the training dataset if you'd like. I included the summary of pay items report XML file with the dataset, so you can do this without having to access designer interface or WebGate. The first thing we need to do is create our summary of pay items file. Under Actions, click on Create File. Verify the Project, Discipline, and File group. Then we need to select the Summary of Pay Items Sheets. Check the file name, sequence, and settings, then click Create Open File. Notice we're in the CESSRD01 file, and we can close the Create File dialog. Once again, this file will have nothing but text and tables in it, so we can leave the plot scale set to 1 and click OK. Now we can select the Import Pay Item Summaries button from the Quantities taskbar. And this opens the FDOT Transport tool. In the Input File line, we need to have the path to the Summary of Pay Items report we just downloaded in the last step. So we can click Browse and navigate to that file. Looking in the Roadway folder, we'll select the T8888 XML file and click Open. Notice that the dialog doesn't appear to have any other options. For some reason, it doesn't appear with a full display. You'll probably need to select the bottom corner and stretch the window to see all the options for this tool. Now we can see the Load button at the bottom. Go ahead and click Load Summary of Pay Items. And notice at the bottom of the window that it's processing the tables. You'll get a Finished Loading pop-up. Click OK. And we can close the Transport tool. So where are our Summary of Pay Items tables? They're there. You just need to fit the view to see them. Take a quick look through and everything looks good. This is the last step in the quantities process. All that's left is to package up and submit your project. This is the end of the FDOT Automated Quantities Training for MicroStation Select Series 4.